What's up everybody, Unrested back here with another JFAC. Today we're going to be talking about moving stuff over to Japan. Now, this might just be for those of you who are thinking about actually moving here to Japan, what kind of stuff you can bring over, but if you're just looking to go on a tour here or visit here or just be a tourist here, um, this might also be helpful because it's going to tell you some things that are intelligent to bring over and some things you might want to just leave at home. So first of all, let's just go from the perspective of moving over here because um, I guess that's that's what my specialty is as far as talking on this channel about JFAC and living in Japan, what it actually is like staying here for at least a year or more. Um, I myself have been here eight years and over that time have finally moved over every last piece of everything I ever owned uh, in America. Um, it, it took me about seven years. Um, I didn't have a lot left by that point. Um, you know, I didn't move over anything big. I didn't try to like move over furniture or something crazy. Um, and you, you should never try to do that either. If you have furniture, if you have a car, if you have anything that's super large, um, sell it. Just sell it. Um, unless you, you know, plan to head back to America. You have a little house there and you're not planning to stay long term. Of course, that's not a good idea for a tourist either because you want to be able to sit down when you get home. Um, but that's the that's the first thing I'm going to just say strike off the list don't ever think about bringing a car over here some people do write to me they say like oh I'm really into like racing and stuff and I've got this souped up car and uh, how much would it cost to ship it over here unless you're amazingly wealthy I mean just like incredibly like you know can finance the most expensive trip ever then no just no okay <laughs> it's not gonna be worth it um the other thing you might find that sucks, and this is something that I had to deal with, is moving a guitar or any other instrument for that matter that can be easily battered by throwers or as the airports like to call them, the people who move your bags, which we call them actually throwers because they throw your bags everywhere and crush them. Um, if you're gonna actually try and bring an instrument, make sure it's in the most bulletproof case you've ever put it in. Um, it's not that it'll really suffer a lot when it gets to Japan, it's that it'll suffer on the way to Japan and the different airlines that you'll use. Um, Canada Air being one of the worst I've ever used in my life. I highly, highly disdain ever using Canada Air. Um, I will repeatedly shoot them down as one of the worst uh, airport staff, uh, security, uh, pilots, uh, stewardess, rudest, most inconvenient uh, company I've ever used, lost my stroller, Never found it, even after I filed multiple reports to try and get my kid's stroller back. Um, delayed my flight so many times uh, that I missed three days of my Christmas vacation. Stuck in the airport with babies with no diapers. Horrible, uh, horrible company. I, I should just do a whole separate JFAC smashing them. Um, anyway, so just be careful if you're going to move an instrument. Um, it's it's going to need a super protective case. If you could possibly carry a smaller instrument with you, like many of you YouTubers have a ukulele, <laughs> um, carry it on the plane with you. I highly recommend that. Same thing goes for computers. Um, you can bring a laptop, um, but again, please put it in your backpack. Do not try to pack up your laptop and hope that it's going to be in working condition when you get it out of your suitcase. Um, you have no idea what hell you know, 16 to 20 hours of throwing a suitcase around will do. Um, you will have computer bits and parts. You won't have a laptop left. Um, some people write me and they talk about how they have like a super hardcore desktop they're thinking about bringing over. Well, I can't imagine you would ever try to bring that on a plane. You would most definitely have to pack that. Don't. Just don't. Um, if there's one thing that is pretty reasonable on price, it's the price of computer parts here in Japan. They're not really too bad at all. Um, a lot of the best parts are made here, hence uh, there's no import. Just build a new one when you get here. You know, make a little extra money, do something on the side, teach some private lessons, build one when you get here. Don't try to bring your desktop over here, man. Don't, don't do that. Come on. Um, again, that'll get smashed. Um, as far as electricity goes, that's a very important aspect. Um, what can you use as far as a plug. Well, if you're coming from Europe, I'm almost 100% sure almost all of Europe has a different type of plug, a different type of power. You're going to have to bring an adapter. America, you're okay. Canada, I think you're okay too. You have the same as America, right? Um, Australia, gosh, I don't even know what you guys have. I'm sorry, Australia. Um, but pretty much, if it's not the American equivalent, uh, you can't bring it. Now, um, from what I've heard, and this is nothing that I have any sort of expertise in, so it's out to 
those of you who are into DJ equipment, sound equipment, or equipment that needs very, very fine-tuned electricity flowing through it, apparently uh, the electricity in Japan won't have a high enough voltage for some DJ equipment. Now, again, you are taking a risk bringing any sort of expensive electronic equipment over in a suitcase. So if you do actually want to do that, do realize the risk. Um, but anything else, like if you have like a hair blow dryer or a curler, a straight iron, I don't know, just like a radio, something like that, that you just plug in or you want to just, you know, charge your phone while you're here with your charger that you have from America, you're fine. Um, it's not going to burn it out or anything like that. I've tried just about damn near everything that I had in America that had a plug, plugged it in here, never had any problems. But like I said, I have had a few people say, hey, Scott, not true. I brought DJ equipment over there and it wasn't powered properly by the Japanese system. Now, I'm, I'm not some kind of electricity expert. I don't know exactly how joules and volts work, so I apologize for that. Uh, let's see, moving on from there, clothes. Well, clothes is going to be different compared to where you live in Japan. Um, obviously, this most southern parts like Okinawa, all the way out to Kohamajima, uh, you're probably going to be dressing light all year. Imagine weather equivalent to the southern parts of America. Florida would be equivalent to Okinawa. Um, you know, we never really get that cold of a winter. Um, what else? Let's see, up here in, I guess what some people say Tokyo is the center of uh, Japan, which it is, but I'd still consider Osaka pretty centralized. It's a little bit more south. Um, it gets about as cold as North Carolina. You're going to need everything from eh, at least one large jacket for the middle of winter. Um, it, gets, it gets cold enough that you need to wear, like, you know, um, a big winter jacket with some layers underneath, um, gloves, a ski cap, stuff like that, to stay comfortable. Um, but those are only a couple days out of the year that it's really super frosty out here. Um, if you're coming out here in summer, dress a light as hell, man. It gets crazy hot. And uh, as I've said before with weather, uh, even when you go inside, it doesn't really get that much cooler. Air conditions not run super strong here. Heater is run super strong here. Um, so that's your clothing needs right there. Uh, as far as oh, medicine, that's important. Okay, so here's how medicine works, because I've had a lot of questions about that in the past. If you have a prescription, bring your prescription inside of your prescription bottles. Do not try to bag it into anything else that does not have a prescription label on it. If you're worried about the things being confiscated or that they're not allowed in another country, as long as you have a prescription tag on those bottles, you're fine. You don't need to worry about it, okay? So, I've gotten that quite a bit. Um, and also, um, different people talking to me about uh, hormone treatment. Um, I get everything from uh, people who need it just for growth hormone or different hormone imbalances that they might have. Um, I have a lot of viewers from uh, transgender community, LGBT community. Um, you can get hormone treatment out in Japan. Um, I actually have two transgender friends who get that. So. If you were wondering about that, yes, you're okay out here. Um, even ones living out in the countryside. I had one transgender friend who lived out in hardcore countryside. Um, he was really worried about it when he got out here. Totally okay, he was taken care of. Um, he had to do a little bit of searching, but he found it. So you can be taken care of with that stuff. Um, let's see, what else could there possibly be? I think I about covered it there with the most needed stuff. Um, as far as food, um, yeah, you're not going to find a lot of your uh, Western favorites out here. Um, that's just something you're going to have to get used to. Uh, you're welcome to bring things out here, um, such as, uh, let's see, I guess a lot of candies. You're not going to find a lot of candies. A lot of stuff with food coloring. There's many, many different types of food coloring not allowed out here. Cereals not allowed out here because of the food coloring in a lot of different cereals. So that's another thing you'll face. Um, Deodorant, something you want to bring, stick deodorant, that's a little bit harder to find. They have spray deodorant here, but it's weak. And uh, surprisingly, I don't know why, I have no biological background um, as far as knowing how sweat glands work. Um, Japanese people just don't seem to sweat nearly as much as gaijin do. It might be something with their diet, um, it might be that they're a lot skinnier on, in general. Um, they just, they don't really need a lot of strong deodorant. Don't get me wrong. Once in a while, you'll run into a smelly-ass Japanese person. But for the most part, they don't sweat the same as us. Um, they just don't smell stinky when they sweat, or I guess they just don't sweat as much. I don't know quite how it works. So deodorant's just not that strong out here. It's not sold as much out here. 
Um, you may want to bring your own toothpaste. Some toothpaste out here doesn't have fluoride. If you're really big on fluoride, uh, bring your own toothpaste so that you know you got exactly what you want. Same thing goes with pretty much any toiletries. I mean, Japan has their own equivalents. Uh, for the most part, you're going to find a lot of stuff is uh, weaker as far as toiletries and as far as medication goes. Uh, for example, if you were to take a Tylenol or a Bearer or Bufferin out here, it would probably be one-fourth of the strength of what you would get in a Western country, just due to the fact that a lot of people weigh less here, so they don't get hit with a hammer pill. Um, they take a lesser dose. Um, you can, of course, take the same stuff out here, but don't be surprised if you double up on medication. You're not going to OD and foam out at the mouth or something like that. Um, I think that about covers it. I think I've got just about everything there. And you know what I'm going to do? I probably have to do an update or number two on this video because right now I'm going to say go ahead and comment below on what you'd like to know about bringing to Japan. Um, I'm sure there's some stuff I missed and if I did, I'd like to hear exactly what you would want to know whether or not to bring, whether it's needed or if it is in Japan. If you like what you saw here today, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Unrested. This was JFAC moving to Japan.